Hello and welcome to Python for Everybody. My name is Charles Severance. Uh, in this short video, I will be explaining how to run exercise 2.3, where we prompt for some hours, prompt for some rate, and uh, multiply them together and print them out with a little paint message. And so this is uh, 2.3. Some of you will immediately want to go to the auto grader and sort of do your homework on the auto grader. I really would rather you didn't do that. Um, unless, of course, you're doing this on an iPad or an or a Android or something where you can't uh, install Python. Uh, but you have to realize that the autograder isn't forever. It, you can only go so far with the autograder and eventually you have to write a real Python program. So I'll eventually show you how to run this autograder, but uh, in, I'm going to instead show you how to run it in the terminal. So I'm first going to go into my Python for Everybody folder and I'm going to make a new folder. Command Shift N is what I just did there, EX0203 for exercise three. And so there's exercise three. Um, and I'm also going to go into Atom, which is my text editor. And uh, see, I just, I have that folder. And so I'm going to make a new file. And I always say print, I'll just say PY4E, oops. PY for E, and then I'll say file, save as, and I want to make sure it's in here, and it's going to be EX underscore O2. I don't like putting spaces in file names. Some operating systems can handle them, but I, that's why I'm using underscores here, so I would avoid using spaces in file names. So as soon as I give that a PY for E, uh, as soon as I give it a Python uh, suffix, I'm there. And so it shows up there in my desktop. And now I'm going to run the terminal program so that I can get there. So CD desktop, CD Python for everybody. That's, that's the folder on my desktop. And if I do an LS, I see a couple folders and a file. I can say LS minus L and see a little more detail that these, these are folder. These two are folders and this one's a file. So change directory, CD EX. 0203 and so now I'm in that folder and if I do an ls minus l I see that file I can also do an ls without the minus l and see the file and now I say python3 ex 0203.py and it runs and I you'll see me no matter how many times you watch me you'll see the first thing that I do is get to the point where I know I'm in the right directory and I can run a little hello program. Before I start coding, I just don't like being crazy, right? So now I'm going to go back and take a look at my assignment. Enter hours, you got a prompt for hours, ask for a number, enter rate, prompt for rate, and then calculate pay. So there's a couple of input statements here. Um, XH is my variable I'm going to choose. Later I'll choose more effective variables, but for now I'm going to make them silly. Um, enter hours colon space. And then I'm going to copy and paste and call this XR for rate. When you're doing this, you need to be very careful to... Uh, and so now I'm going to calculate XP time, which is X h times x r and then I'm going to say print pay oops I don't need to put a space because this comma effectively creates a space xp and then I'm going to save that and I'm going to switch to my terminal program clear my screen in my terminal program and I'm going to type up arrow, because I already typed python 3 x 203py So my hours, I'll just start with something really simple that I can calculate in my head. 10 and 5. Whoops. Can't multiply sequence of non-int of, by sequence of non-int of type stir. Here we have a traceback. And again, I encourage you to realize that these tracebacks are not uh, personal attacks by Python on you, even though they might be frustrating. And so the way to parse this is 
Start by saying line three. Something's wrong at line three. It, it's pretty good at knowing what line it is, or it's either that line or the line above it. And it's something about multiplying. You know, it's just, it. what it's really saying is I'm confused. I have to stop because I cannot understand your instructions. So <clears throat> the problem here, of course, is that this is of type string. And so you can't multiply a string times a string. Okay, and so we can convert this using the float, float. So that's a function call now. We're passing the string h x h in, and the value we get back is the floating point version of that. And then we call float for this as well. And so now I'll save that. Always remember to save. So I'm going to run it, and so I'm going to run my hours of 10 and my rate of 10. And it's 100. And so that looks pretty good. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to run this in the auto grader. And this is the, my idea is you'll take this and you'll copy it and you'll go back to the auto grader now and just paste this in. Okay. And so it says use 35 hours and a rate of 275. So let's check the code. 35 hours. Okay. 75. Oh, no, 275. 2.75. And so it's running and it's running and it's running and it works. And of course, now I've got my grade. So this idea where you work here to get your assignment done correctly and then you run it in the auto grader is the way I intend for you to do it. But again, if you can't do it that way, it's a great way to get started to just write your code in the auto grader. And you know, you can change your code in the auto grader and then run it again. Of course, this is going to fail. 35 and 2.75 and of course you get a mismatch and now it's a ma angry at you and they, the mismatch here of course is because it, I print howdy pay and pay and it's real picky about it and you think oh I got the 96.25 right well it, it doesn't really care so much about that so uh, let me go ahead and fix this and run it so we leave on a successful note uh, 35 hours and 2.75 as the rate per hour. It's kind of a low rate per hour. And we're getting successful. And of course, uh, that means that you now have a grade on assignment 2.3. Look at that. I got a grade on assignment 2.3. Unless, of course, you're running this in some other environment. Okay? Thank you uh, so much. And I hope that uh, this has been useful to you.